Behold the tiny loaf tin. Hi everyone, it's Tash and welcome to another recipe video. And today I'm technically still in Malaysia, so we're going to make another Malaysian recipe. Obviously the video you're watching right now, I'm still in my flat in London, but right now, in body, physically, today, I am in Cape Kinabalu, having a great time visiting the family. At least I hope so, I am recording this in the past after all. I could be having an awful time, who knows? Let's just assume I'm having a great time. Ramble over, today we're making a dessert again. One of my favourites, to be honest, I love the most Malaysian dessert. And this one's going to be Kui Lapis, which means layered cake or layered biscuit. Kui has different meanings, it can be like a little snack, a little dessert, sweets, biscuits, cakes, it has multiple meanings. If you're saying kek, that is definitely cake, but kek lapis or kek lapis sarak is actually a completely different type of cake, which we will make another time. It's a lengthy process that one, so I have to be in a particular mood to make it, but we'll get to that another time. Today we're making kui lapis, which is a sticky rice cake type of cake. Although technically the main ingredient is tapioca flour, but rice flour does feature in it. And plenty of rich coconut milk and pandan leaf, which is essential in a lot of Malaysian desserts. And we're going to be using this super cute little loaf tin to make it in. This is a one pound loaf tin. That's not one pound English sterling the money, one pound is in the weight. About 450 grams, but they're sold as one pound loaf tin. I don't know why most of the time we use metric here, but sometimes we use imperial. Then ask me, I don't make the rules. Anyway, one pound loaf tin, because we're just making a small batch today. So let's go to the kitchen and see how it's done. The first thing I want to do is infuse some water with pandan leaves, which is these lovely fragrant leaves, also known as screw pine, which I have here. So I'm heating up some water. This is 250 milliliters. Ooh, maybe not that hot. And what I'm going to do to these long, lovely leaves is, whoops, <laughs> dunk them, is we're going to shred them like this, just to make sure we have the most flavour. Then I'm just going to loosely knot these so that they fit in the pan a bit more easily, like this. Oh, I can smell that lovely, fragrant, sweet smell already. And then we're going to dump them in the water and we're going to bring this to a boil Shut the heat off and then let it cool down to let those leaves infuse. Now that this has come to the boil, I'm just going to flip these leaves over to get nicely even infusion. Simply switch it off and take it off the heat to cool down. And that's it, simple. Now that this is completely cool, we're going to discard the leaves. Now to make our kway, we're going to mix 200 grams of tapioca flour with 20 grams of rice flour, and this is plain old rice flour, not glutinous rice flour, just ordinary rice flour. Add in 160 grams of caster sugar and a pinch of salt. Now we're going to strain in that pandan water we just made. Got to strain it because we don't want any leafy bits in it. And we're going to start mixing while adding 300 milliliters of thick coconut milk. Easy. Now I'm just going to put this into a pouring jug to make it a little bit easier to handle because we're about to section it off and colour it. Ooh, while we're doing that, make sure we get any starchy bits at the bottom. Make sure that's all mixed in. And add it to our batter. Give that a little stir too. And now for the fun part, we're going to colour them. And I'm going to more or less evenly divide this batter between the six. It kind of works. And now I'm going to add some rainbow colours. I'm using gel food colouring by the way because this stuff is very potent. Beautiful. To prepare our little loaf pan, we're going to grease it, line it and grease it again. Otherwise, this cake is going to be a real pain in the butt to try and get out of the tin. And that's going to help our paper stick. And now what I've done is I've cut two strips of paper. This is the first one. And this is going to help us lift the cake out afterwards. That's one. I've just cut off a bit of excess here. Don't need that. 
Ooh, that. Let's give these a little bit of a crease. That's the first one. Just grease that bottom again. And now this longer one over the top. And we're going to oil her up a little bit too. Just for a little extra insurance. So here I set up my steaming station. I've got a deep pot with a little steaming rack at the bottom and some water just gently simmering, make sure it doesn't touch the bottom of that rack. I've got my loaf tin here and this is my lid, which I've actually covered with a dishcloth, secured it with rubber bands. And this will help prevent drips. You know, when the condensation hits the pan and the water drips down, we don't want that on our cake. So this is how it looks. And for each colour we're going to do two layers, so 12 in total. Let's start with purple. We're going to pour about half of that in, like this. It's going to be a bit messy, but never mind. That is life. Is that half? Let's compare with one of the other colours. A little bit more. That's about half. And now I'm going to use this contraption here to grab this safely and plop it in our steamer. Now we're going to cover that and we're going to steam it for nine minutes. So be back in nine minutes. Nine minutes is up. Let's carefully see how we're doing. Oh, nice. Now let's quickly take this out, careful with the steam, and we're basically going to continue doing this again and again and again until all of the mixture is mixed is used up. Here we go, round two, that'll be another nine minutes. That's our purple layer done. Now for the blue. Don't forget to occasionally top up with water, by the way. You don't want it to boil dry. And as you can see, it does darken in colour when it cooks. That's normal, don't worry. It'll be super vibrant once it's all done. It's also a good idea to give the mixture a bit of a mix because when it sits, the starch does fall to the bottom. So. Give it a bit of a stir before adding the next layer. Oops. Back in for another nine minutes. And basically you just have to do this over and over again. It is going to take some time unfortunately because it is nine minutes per layer. So do factor that in, it will take you a little bit of time but patience is rewarding. And we are done. Phew, that was a journey. Now with all good things, she is a little bit uh, jiggly. So we're gonna let this cool down completely. Whoops, a little bit blurry. There we go. And uh, cooling down, to be honest, will take about four hours because this is dense. So just leave it to cool to room temperature for a few hours and then we're going to slice it. And here we have our cools down block of Crelepis. So I'm just going to attempt to free the cake. Putting it on the side is a little bit easier to be honest. There we go. Oh, nice. Here's a little cheeky side view. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm so happy with that. Now I'm going to take a knife and wet it because this stuff is very sticky and then I'm going to slice it. Oh, that is a chewy bugger. Pop! Come on, release! Woohoo! Excellent. Let me just pick that one up. 
Wow, what a beauty. And you have to wet the knife in between, otherwise it is going to stick. Let's see that from the side. I can't explain how satisfying cutting this thing is. <laughs> And because these are quite long for Cray Cray, I'm going to cut them in half as well. And they love sticking to each other as well. So sticky, even after being cut. That's part of the fun though. How about that? Super vibrant. <laughs> Possibly one of the most colourful things I've ever made. And what I used to love doing as a kid is eating it layer by layer. And if you've cooked it right, and you can literally peel layers off it. Or you could choose to be civilised and eat it with a fork. I think it's far more fun to peel it layer by layer though. Also, eating it with a fork can be tricky as you can see. It is very jiggly. I love how squishy this cake is. After about a day it gets a little bit softer before becoming extremely hard so do try to eat it within one or two days. The first day you make it it's quite tough and Almost like a melt-in-the-mouth gummy. It's very difficult to describe, but it's really rich with that creamy coconut milk. And you can smell that pandan. It's so fragrant. And it's just the right amount of sweet. One of my favourites. And this is almost like the stress ball of the cake kingdom. Look at that. How you eat it is up to you. Usually you eat it with a fork. Um, as children, I liked to peel them layer by layer and I, I think I'm not alone in that. <laughs> or you can, you know, just grab it with your hand and the old fashioned way. You can peel any layer. There you go, I've got two reds and an orange there. Uh, just to be difficult, I'm going to take a bite out of the bigger piece, so cheers. Excuse me, yum. Kind of refreshing as well extra chewy. Like I said, it softens a bit after the first day if you just leave it covered with cling film for 24 hours. It does get less chewy and more soft, but I really like it chewy. It's all down to preference at the end of the day. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll join me next Wednesday for my next one and I will be back in London then. Get the full written recipe on my blog tashcakes.com and find me on Instagram as tashcakes.tastes. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to see more. Give this video a like if you'd like to help other people find it. Comment down below if you'd like me to make anything in particular. And I'll see you guys next time. Be good, be nice, and have a good week.